Hi everyone, in this series we're going to be creating a custom gradient editor. So we'll be writing a property draw script to customize its appearance and behavior in the inspector, and then a editor window script to create the pop-up window where we can actually edit the gradient. And we can of course have whatever settings and controls we want here. So just as a basic example, I've got this discrete mode where we can control discrete blocks of color and then also this bleed mode where we have some more control over how the colors blend together. Now Unity does have a built-in gradient editor, so the main point of this exercise is really just to learn about editor scripting in general, but by adding in some custom functionality and getting past the eight colors per gradient limit, we could end up with something that's quite useful in its own right. Anyway, let's get on with it. So I'm gonna start by creating a new c -sharp script called custom gradient. And I'll open that up and just remove all of the mono behavior stuff. Now, at the heart of this class is going to be a method called evaluate. This will be a public method returning a color. And it's going to take in a float parameter called time, which just tells us when the gradient we want to pick the color from. So obviously zero would be the start of the gradient and one would be the end of the gradient. For now, just as a test, let's simply return color.lerp between two colors, say color dot white and color dot black, using this time parameter. All right, now to be able to preview the gradient in the editor, we're going to need to be able to get a texture of the gradient. So let's create a new public method, this time returning a texture 2D called get texture. And this can just take in an int for the width of the texture. Okay, so here we'll want to create a new texture 2D variable, just call that texture is equal to a new texture 2D I'll give that a width of the supplied width and a height of one, since we can just stretch the texture uh, vertically to whatever height we want. Now, the most efficient way to set the pixels of our texture is to set them all in one go. So we're first going to generate an array of colors. We'll just call this colors equal to a new array of colors with a size of width. And we're going to loop from i equals zero to i less than the width of the texture. And in here, we'll just be setting colors with an index of i equal to evaluate at some time. So this time should be zero when i is zero and one when i is uh, equal to width minus one. So we can just say i divided by, and then in brackets, width minus one. Now, uh, of course, we have to be careful because i is an integer and width is also an integer. So the result will just be rounded to an integer. So let's just cast i to a float. Or of course, we could cast width to a float as well. It doesn't really matter. And then outside of the loop, we can say texture and dot set pixels and pass in our colors array. And then we will apply the change to the texture just by using this apply method. And finally, we can return the texture. All right, let's save this and head back to Unity. I'm gonna create a, another c -sharp script called test. And I'm gonna attach that to an empty object, open it up. And this is just gonna hold a public custom gradient variable. I'll just call it my gradient. All right, and for that to show up in the inspector, we of course need to go into the custom gradient script and just add this system.serializable attribute to the top. Okay, so if we save that and go into the object here, we should see this my gradient variable popping up. Now, I wanted to display the gradient in a little rectangle alongside the label, and I want to be able to click on that rectangle to open up a editor window. So the way that we can customize how our class appears in the inspector is by creating a property drawer for it. So let's create, first of all, a editor folder. And then inside that folder, I'm going to create a new C-sharp script called the gradient drawer. All right, I'll open that up and I'm going to add the Unity editor namespace up at the top here. And this is going to inherit from property drawer. And it's going to have an attribute here specifying that this is a custom property drawer. 
of the custom gradient class. Okay, so to begin drawing, we're going to need to override the property drawers on GUI method. And you can see this has got a bunch of parameters here. There's the position rect, which just tells us the space that we've been allocated to draw a property in the inspector. Then there's the property itself. And finally, the label, which just contains the name of the variable that we're drawing. So for example, uh, to draw the label onto the screen, we could use GUI.label, pass in the position rectangle, and then pass in the label. Now, if we wanted to modify the label, we could say, for example, label.text, and then add some string onto that. So for example, I'll just say, blah, blah. All right, now if we save this, go into Unity, and go onto our game object, we should see my gradient, blah, blah. And of course, if we create another custom gradient variable in our test class, let me just call this other gradient, save this, then over here we'll see in a moment other gradient, blah, blah. Okay, so hopefully that makes it clear that the gradient draw script is being used to handle the drawing of each of these custom gradient variables individually. Let's go back to the gradient draw script and go to remove the blah blah, don't particularly need that. And now I want to get the gradient texture from the custom gradient that we're currently drawing. In order to do that, we're going to need to convert this serialized property that we've been given into a custom gradient object so that we can call the get texture method on it. Now, the way that we do this is a tiny bit convoluted. We need to use this field info variable, which is part of the property drawer class and we use its get value method, passing in property dot serialized object dot target object. So this will return an object, which we then need to cast to our custom gradient. All right, so now we can just create a custom gradient variable, call this the gradient, and set it equal to the result. We could now try doing something like GUI dot draw texture, passing in our position and gradient dot get texture, and for the width we'll just use position dot width. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Uh, hang on, that is a float, so it must be cast to an int. Save that and go into Unity. Let's go onto the game object here. And we can see that the gradient texture is now being drawn. Of course, it's currently being drawn under our label, uh, where we actually want it alongside the label. And more worrying than that is that the textures will sometimes disappear. For example, if I interact with some other element over here, you can see it disappears. And sometimes even if I just uh, move my mouse scroll wheel, then it will disappear for a while. Now, I'm not sure what causes that strange behavior, but thankfully there is a workaround to it. So what we have to do is create a new GUI style. I'll just call this gradient style. Set that equal to a new GUI style. And then we can say gradient style dot normal, which is just the normal rendering settings dot background is equal to the gradient texture that we're grabbing over here. So let me cut that, put it over there and I'll delete this draw texture call. And then we're going to create another label with GUI.label. Let's just draw that at the position again for now. And for the content, I'll just say GUI content dot none. And then for the style, I'll pass in the gradient style. All right, so if we save this now and go back into Unity, when this refreshes, we should see it still looks exactly the same, but now we've got none of that flickering going on. Obviously, I don't want these textures overlapping the labels, so let's go back into the script. And let's start by figuring out how much space the label takes up. To do this, we're going to need to find the GUI style that is used to draw the label. So that is stored in GUI.skin.label. And this has a calc size method, which takes in a GUI content and returns a vector2 for how much space it takes up on the screen. So we can simply pass in our label content. And I'm only interested in how much space it takes up on the x-axis. 
so I'll say dot x, and we can just store this uh, value in a float called something like label width. All right, and then I'm just going to add some small buffer value, say 5, onto the end here, just to give it some breathing room. Okay, let's now calculate the rectangle that we want to use to draw the gradient texture. So I'll create a rectangle called texture rect, and this will be equal to a new rectangle, and the x position will be position.x plus the width of the label. The y-axis will just be position.y. The width will be position.width minus the label width, and the height will be position.height. Okay, so now when we're drawing our texture over here, instead of using the position rect, we'll of course use the texture rect. So let's save that, go into Unity and see how that's looking. You can see as we uh, scale this out, that will expand as well. So I think that's working nicely. I think it's worth mentioning, even if we don't really need it here, that we can request more vertical space for our property uh, by overriding this method called getPropertyHeight. So here if I return, say, 30, go into Unity, you can see that we'll be allocated more space here, and so the position rect that's passed in over here will have a height now of 30. Anyway, I'm going to remove that because I'm happy with the default. And now I want to make it so that when we click on the texture, it opens a editor window. So to know if the user presses the mouse, we're going to need access to the current event. So I'll say GUI event is equal to event.current. And now we only actually need to draw this stuff if the current GUI event is a repaint event. So I'll say if the type is equal to event type dot repaint, then we're going to do all of this stuff here. But I do want the gradient outside of that if statement. And I also want the texture rect calculated outside of there, like so. Because if it's not a repaint event, then we're going to be listening for input, and we're going to say that if GUI event dot type is equal to event type dot mouse down, and GUI event dot button is equal to zero, so that means it was the left mouse that was pressed down, then if the text direct contains the mouse point, so GUI event dot mouse position, then we know that the user has clicked on the texture rectangle. And in that case, we want to open our editor window, so we'd have that code right over here. Now, before we can actually implement that, we need to create an editor window script. So let's quickly go back into Unity, and inside the editor folder, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script called the gradient editor. I'll open that up, and this also needs to have the Unity Editor namespace, and it's going to inherit from Editor Window. And in the onEnable method, I simply want to say title content dot text is equal to gradient editor. All right, I'll save that, and now that we have the script, we can go back into our gradient drawer, and we can say Editor Window dot get window, and we'll specify the type as being a gradient editor. So if there's already a gradient editor window open, then get window will just make sure that it gets focus, and if there isn't, then it will open a new gradient editor. So let's save that, go into Unity, go into our little game object here, and let's click on a gradient, and we can see this gradient editor pops up. All right, I think we've made good progress for this episode, so hopefully I'll see you back in episode two. Until then, cheers.